Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased and privileged to be here at this distinguished audience to address you about the situation on the ground in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. <clears throat> in fact, I'm coming with facts and figures on the ground, and this is not based on analysis or reading reports. We are facing the terrorist organization of ISIS in a front line which is 1,050 kilometers long. And we are also burdened with nearly 2 million refugees from Syria and IDPs from the rest of Iraq. And we have got disagreements with the federal government in Baghdad. So taking these three issues, military, economic, and political challenges, would tell you how the situation is in Kurdistan region. Let me first start by expressing our deep condolences to the people and government of France for the tragic terrorist attacks that happened in Paris. And we are grateful for France for its solidarity and support for Kurdistan region, for the Peshmerga, and for the IDPs and refugees. I would also like to start by thanking the US-led international coalition, who have been a partner in providing military support and assistance in order to sustain this costly war against the terrorism of ISIS. But in fact, this, is, this has not been an easy war. This is over 15 months that we have been engaged in a day-to-day -day fight. The Peshmerga forces of Kurdistan are proud to play that role. Although they are a constitutional force recognized by the Iraqi constitution to be the regional guards, unfortunately, we did not receive what the Iraqi army received from the United States and NATO in the last 10 years after the fall of Saddam Hussein regime. The Iraqi army was built, but unfortunately not on the right foundations. We are proud the Peshmergas have been able to adopt a two-phase strategy. First, to stop the advances of ISIL and to be on the defensive. Second, to be on the offensive and take back territory. We are proud that 25,000 square kilometers have been retaken since last year. But this has been a costly war. We have sacrificed more than 1,300 Peshmergas and over 7,500 wounded so far. Therefore, we need the support of the international community. We are grateful for what has been done so far, but unfortunately, we are suffering. We are suffering because the economy in Kurdistan region is very challenging. Last year, the former Prime Minister Maliki cut the budget of Kurdistan region, and we were obliged to run the region without any budget from the federal government. And I don't believe any government has done that against a region of its own. After the replacement of Maliki with, former, with Prime Minister Abadi, we hoped for a better change. And we hope that through reaching an agreement with the new Prime Minister, we will be able to have a better understanding. We reached an agreement for us to provide oil for Baghdad to provide us our share of budget. Unfortunately, we waited for six months this year. It did not work. So therefore, Baghdad owes us nearly 15 billion US dollars to date. We are behind three months in paying the salaries of civil servants and Peshmergas in the front line. And this is not a situation to be to sustain this costly war, to care for refugees from Syria and IDPs from the rest of Iraq, and not to be able to provide services. Over 6,000 projects in Kurdistan have been stopped because we don't have budget to do so. Therefore, our message to the international community is that we are proud of the role we have played, but unfortunately, we do not sit in the anti-ISIS conferences because the federal government in Baghdad goes and denies us the presence in such kind of meetings, while the Peshmergas do not come under the command and control of Prime Minister Abadi. So we are paying a price of a situation neither we are fully integrated into Iraq nor are we fully independent. So we are in limbo. What we ask for is sovereignty for the sacrifices of the people of Kurdistan region and Peshmerga to be respected and to be appreciated. <clears throat> More than 70% of our casualties have been from the IEDs and VBIEDs. And that has been catastrophic. <coughs> we are grateful for the coalition members who provided equipment and training and capacity building in this, but the war is not over yet. We are proud of the latest victory in Sinjar which was very significant and symbolic to assure the minorities who have a better future in Kurdistan region. But unfortunately, the war is not over. We are yet to tackle the issue of Mosul. 
but also having difficulty in terms of gas that has been used by ISIS, especially numerous times chlorine has been used, but more recently mustard gas has been used. This is where also we need assistance, but also gas masks for, to provide for the Peshmergas. The Peshmergas in the front line, not all of them have got helmet or body armor or proper gears. Winter has come and we do not have the right gear for it. So therefore the Peshmergas need assistance through heavy weaponry, ammunition, train and capacity building, but also we need assistance for the Peshmergas who have been wounded and some of the wounds are critical that cannot be treated in Kurdistan because of the limited capacity. So we urge you to help the Peshmergas who have built a reliable partner and the force on the ground that have defeated that ISIS and are determined to continue the fight. <clears throat> Fighting ISIS is not only military. We have to confront them. We have done that in Kurdistan region, but we have to fight them ideologically. They carry an ideology. Our understanding of ISIS is a developed version of Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda mainly relied on the jihadi, takfiri, Salafist. ISIS added that religious extremism to national extremism. So a combination of both is that. We talk about the foreign fighters, but not all of them are foreign fighters. So 10, 12 to 50% are the foreign fighters whom we all have to work on regionally and internationally to stop. But what about the indigenous fighters? That takes me to the root causes. We have to look into the root causes of this problem and not only to deal with the outcome. Had Prime Minister Maliki responded positively to the demands of the Sunnis in Anbar province three years ago, the situation would have been different. There were some people demonstrating, asking and having legitimate demands, security, inclusion, safety, services and justice. That was responded to militarily, and it was put within the framework of war against terror. Therefore, you can't have a government sitting in Baghdad to disenfranchise and marginalize and exclude the Sunni component, to be hostile to the Kurds, and still to claim that they have a national inclusive government. Therefore, it has a political component as well. So it is military, it's ideology, ideological, and it's also a political component. Economically, we have to fight them as well because they have been able to gain money from the trading of the oil sale, from the ransom, from levying taxes, and also from the money that has been coming to them. It's doable. If there is will, there is way. We are suffering on a daily basis. That's why it's not about luxury that we are talking about ISIS. For us, we have to be cautious 24-7 in order to stop ISIS. Yes, they have been defeated. Yes, they have been weakened compared with last year, but they are still a posing threat to the Kurdistan region and to the rest of Iraq. Therefore, Baghdad needs to do more. And I'm sorry to say that the federal government in Baghdad has not been supportive of the Peshmerga as they should have been. First and foremost, this was the responsibility of the National Army, which unfortunately former Prime Minister Maliki turned it into a sectarian army. And that's why when ISIS came, a limited number of people came, their target was to release some prisoners in Badush and to pose a threat to Mosul. Contrary to their expectation, the army, Iraqi army, six divisions of the army collapsed. They did not have the will to fight, and we have all suffered. Therefore, we have to think about finding a political solution in this country in order to make sure to have the Sunnis included, the Kurds to have a role, and the Shias to have a role, if we were to talk about an Iraq that can function. Unfortunately, Iraq today is dysfunctioning. We were hoping with the new prime minister we will be able to reach an agreement and an understanding. We are still open to dialogue. We have not closed the door, but we need to do more. We have to make sure that fighting ISIS is a priority for the KRG and also for Baghdad. We have to make sure that caring for IDPs and refugees is a priority for both of us, and also sorting out the differences between the main components of Iraq would be a priority. Otherwise, it is not going the right way. This was the first challenge that we are facing. 
We are proud of the role we have played. We are proud that we have pushed ISIS and we are determined to continue, but alone we cannot make it. So therefore our call would be on NATO institutions, on ATA and friends in the West and the rest is to provide moral, political and military support for Kurdistan region. Even sometimes the Peshmerga forces are not being mentioned because sometimes they refer to them as Iraqi security forces. And in fact, no one in Kurdistan believes that that sentence represents our Peshmerga forces. Therefore, I would urge you to recognize at least the sacrifices of the Peshmerga and show appreciation for what they have done, because this has been costly to us. The second challenge we are facing is the economic challenge. <clears throat> Again, we are not invited to sit at the humanitarian conferences, which they discuss the issues of IDPs and refugees, assuming that Baghdad represents us. In fact, Baghdad has not done anything very token at the beginning of this crisis last year. Otherwise, they have not. So all that burden on Kurdistan region of Iraq. So what we have today is an increase of 30% of our population. People who have come to share the water, health services, electricity, food, and pose a problem for us in terms of shelter. That's why we urge you to come and help through the United Nations agencies and programs, through the international organizations, to help those people to have a better future. Because if we are not able to address their problems and needs there, if we are not able to bring stabilization to Kurdistan region, to Iraq, and to Syria, these people would become potential asylum seekers and potential threats to you. Therefore, these challenges are interconnected. The security is interconnected. The refugee is interconnected and also the political. We are proud in Kurdistan region that we have started our journey after the Kurdish spring in 1991. We had an uprising. We were able to defy and challenge Saddam Hussein and go towards elections elect our parliament, build our government. We don't claim that we are perfect. We have just started our journey towards democratization. We need your help. We need institutional ties. We need you to support us because we stand for the same values that you cherish and stand for. We stand for democracy, for rule of law, for transparency, for the empowerment of women, and for a free media. Therefore, we would like you to look and see Kurdistan region as it is because but Iraq is not only the green zone. Iraq is much wider than the green zone. Iraq is a multi, a binational, multicultural, multi-ethnic society. Therefore, the diversity should be respected. We in Kurdistan region are proud of this culture that we have, of peaceful coexistence. We have Kurds and non-Kurds, Turkmen, Assyrian, Chaldean, Christians, Muslims, Christians, uh, Yazidis, Shabak, Faili, they're all living together in peace. But we want to keep that diversity because we see it as a source of strength. We need you to help us, to help us be there so that we will not collapse. Today, the major challenge we are facing is the economy. We need you to come to help inject some money into the banks of Kurdistan region, to encourage investment companies to come and invest in the region, to help us so that we can help those who need our help. Alone, we cannot do it, but we hope we can count on you in providing that help. I would say that Kurdistan or the Kurdish people have been betrayed in the history. We were divided against our will after the First World War between Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and Syria. We are the largest nation in the world that we do not have a state of our own. We have become minorities in four countries. I talk about Iraqi Kurdistan. I, not, I am not talking about the other parts, but of course, we support the rights of Kurds in each of these parts. We hope that they will be able to reach solutions to their problems through peaceful means, through dialogue, and through democracy, and not through violence. But at least we want the United States, NATO, and Europe to look at the region. Yes, we have the Palestinian question in the Middle East, but the Kurdish question is an important one. Don't underestimate the Kurdish question, because they are in four countries in the Middle East, and Middle East, which is volatile. We are rich in oil, in gas, in natural resources, in minerals. We are rich in water. We have good fighting force, but we stand for values. Going back to 1991, when we liberated Kurdistan, 
Over 60,000 Iraqi army officers and soldiers were there. The same soldiers and officers who committed crimes against Kurdistan, we opened a new page with them. We issued an amnesty. And this is what we wanted Iraq to adopt after the fall of Saddam Hussein regime. Unfortunately, they adopted revenge and retaliation, and we are paying the price today. We are pro proud of what we have done, but alone we cannot do it. Therefore, the Kurdish question needs to be addressed as it is. In Iraqi Kurdistan, we are trying our best through dialogue and understanding with Baghdad. Either we find a solution how to coexist together. We have waited 12 years now after 2003. Baghdad is not willing, does not have the will to implement the federal system because they don't want to share the power. They don't want to delegate power and they don't want to share the wealth. We can't continue 12 more years to wait for Baghdad to implement it. We have to have a frank and open discussion about our future. The only solution or station that would be there between that and independence would be a confederation, where we can have a confederation or three or more sovereign states within the current boundaries of Iraq, so that we, we have sovereignty on our own issues and we have authority. If that was not doable, then we think about a referendum whereby the people of Kurdistan to make their decision to see what do they want. And then for us, Erbil and Baghdad, to discuss about an amicable divorce. Because no matter where we stand, no matter how it is the relationship, Baghdad will remain as a strategic partner for Kurdistan region. We hope that the dialogue will continue with Baghdad. We hope that Baghdad will try to be inclusive, will try to commit itself to the agreements that have been made in order to help us. We see ourselves close to you. When we talk about fighting ISIS, we all have a responsibility. We confront them in the front line, but who should confront them ideologically? There has to be a clear difference between Islam as religion and political Islam. If we beat around the bush and don't go and talk about the essence of the problem, we will not get anywhere. We have to be courageous enough to address the real cause of the problem. Otherwise, this will remain. Mosques should be for worship. Money has to be controlled. I sit in Erbil, and when I want to send and transfer money to KRG offices abroad, there are hundreds of obstacles in the way. How can ISIS get that money without any hindrance? We need to get visas when we travel to Europe, and it's a painstaking process. But these people, especially the foreign fighters, have got foreign passports and they get entry upon arrival. Therefore, a serious consideration has to be given to those who are ISIS and for us to fight them, fight them in the media because we are giving them a platform. The international media, the Arab media, all the media is giving a platform for ISIS to promote its ideology. We have to fight them through the social media. They have, they have been trying to recruit thousands of people across the boundaries because the social media goes anywhere. That's why we need to confront these realities and be very serious. Containment is, a not, is not a policy of fighting ISIS. It should be confrontation and confrontation at all levels. So I don't want to take much of your time. I'm thankful for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. But I would like to assure you that the people of Kurdistan, the Peshmergas, are proud to be in the front line fighting ISIS, caring for refugees and IDPs, and almost all the Christians, the Yazidis, and the Sunnis who have fled violence in the rest of Iraq are in Kurdistan region. But we cannot do it alone. We need your help and we need your support. NATO and the International Coalition can provide a lot of training courses, capacity building, inviting the Peshmergas to see their needs and how can you help us in order to overcome the challenges. Once again, thank you for giving me this opportunity.